Hey guys, today I'm going to be doing a quick repair. Pretty easy repair. A lot of people have never done one of these before, so I figured I'd do a video on it. Uh, this is going to be fixing a leak on a Kohler Revival lavatory faucet. This series is the, uh, the Revival series. They made lav faucets, uh, I think they made a tub faucet, uh, there's a matching shower, all of that stuff. But this is the lav faucet. What we're going to do is we're going to replace the cartridge on the hot or the cold side. So the problem is that we've got a drip. It's a very slow drip, but it's been dripping for a while, so it's something I've been meaning to get to. So this is a modern type of uh, valve, so it's actually a ceramic valve, and it's actually a cartridge assembly that you end up replacing. In the old days, you could actually replace a washer uh, that, you know, you basically had to take something similar to this apart, take the valve, which was called the valve stem, and then there was a screw you removed to change a washer, which is a very inexpensive part. bad part about those is they didn't last as long as these. These ceramic valves last a long, long time. Uh, hard water and different water conditions can actually affect the lifespan of the valve. It's probably what happened here. So the first thing you need to do is uh, determine which side is leaking. So, you know, you watch it dripping and then you shut off underneath the counter. You're going to have a shut off valve on each side. The left one for hot and the right one for cold. You shut one off and you wait and see if it stops dripping. If it stops dripping, well, then you know that you uh, have figured out which one it is. If it still drips, try shutting off the other side, and then if it stops, turn the first side back on again, and if the drip returns, it means both valves are leaking. In my case, just one valve was leaking. So this is the cartridge assembly. This is a genuine Kohler part purchased from Home Depot. If you go to Home Depot, they usually have a book there that you can look up your faucet model and determine which cartridge fits it. Now there are two cartridges for this faucet because there's a uh, clockwise and a counterclockwise and what it really is, is it's a hot and a cold because these valves are quarter turn valves and you'll notice that this one gets turned counterclockwise to turn the water on and this one gets turned clockwise to turn the water on. So I could put the wrong valve in the wrong side, but then the knob will, the, the lever won't work correctly and nobody wants that, so. Oh, so the part number for this particular one is an RGP77006-RP. And on the back, it actually clearly says that this is a half inch ceramic valve counterclockwise close cold. So they're basically saying it's the cold water one which we turn it clockwise to turn it on but counterclockwise to shut it, to close it. Pretty self-explanatory. So the next step is I'm going to shut off the water supply to the side that I want to change the cartridge on. If for some reason you do not have a shutoff valve underneath your vanity to shut the water off, you will have to shut off the main water supply in the entire house or apartment. Next step is I need to remove the handle and the handle on this particular faucet is actually part of this assembly. So this all comes off together. So what I have to do is I have to turn this counterclockwise to unscrew it and you got to be able to grip it without damaging it. So you don't want to put a wrench on here because you'll destroy the finish. Even if you think you're going to be able to grab it here and it won't slip, trust me, the jaws of your pliers will destroy that. So you need a uh, strap wrench. These are pretty inexpensive. And they're handy to have. They come in all different sizes. Putting it on this way or this way determines which direction you want to actually make it go. So I need to go counterclockwise, so I need it to go on this way. And as you can see, sometimes it's stubborn. Now I know I just said you can't grab these with pliers because you're going to damage the finish. But this is on there so tight the strap wrench can't grip it enough. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use these pliers 
but I'm going to only put the jaws of the pliers on the rubber of the strap wrench and once you get it started it's actually pretty easy well interesting there's water trapped underneath there filthy water too I wonder if this valve has been leaking out of the top also. Next up, I'm going to use a wrench to unscrew the valve cartridge from the faucet assembly. Arrgh! That whole assembly is turning in the vanity, so I'm going to have to grab onto it from down underneath because I don't want that whole thing unscrewing. So the problem is, uh, you know, that when I go to turn this and unscrew this stem from the body, the whole body tries to turn. This is a 5 8 inch wrench. You can see the whole thing's turning. So I've got to be able to hold that nut that's underneath there. So this is what it looks like under the sink, upside down, which is not the ideal way to have to try and work, but hey, you know what, plumbers do this all the time. So this is the uh, underside of the valve body, okay? and there are actually, you can see this flat right here. There's a flat just like that on the back side. So that's what allows you to grab onto this. So the trick is you got to grab onto those two flats with a wrench to hold this so it doesn't turn. You don't want to grab onto anywhere over here where these threads are, because if you damage the threads, if you ever have to take this out, you're going to have a really hard time getting this nut off. You also have to be careful that you don't inadvertently grab the pipe here, okay? this copper pipe or your braided line where it hooks up because you could damage those that would be bad so there's a couple of ways we could grab this common tool you can get at any hardware store at a home center is uh, this unusual looking wrench right here this is called a basin wrench and this wrench is specifically designed just for those kind of jobs reaching up underneath behind the sink which is called the basin and getting to those hard to reach connections. So you could try and grab it with this, but this is not ideal. It wasn't really made for the job that we're looking at. You might be able to grab it with a pair of pliers like these. There's probably not enough room in there to get a conventional open-end wrench, which, you know, in this case you're going to need like a one-inch wrench to get on there. So, as luck would have it, what I have is I have a what they call a crow's foot or an offset wrench. So this is just an attachment that goes on to your the end of a regular 3 8 drive ratchet and it basically recreates what that tool does only this is going to be wide enough to really grab onto that well. Now if you have two people it might be better to have somebody on the bottom hold that wrench on so it can't slip off. I happen to have really long arms so luckily I was able to uh, hold this and I tell you it was really tight but I was able to get it off. And there we go. That little bit of water that's leaking out, that's water that's in the other line that comes up here to the faucet is now, because there's no nothing to stop it from doing so, it now is leak, trying to seek its own level and that's why that little bit of water came out of there. All right, so now I'm gonna install the new cartridge and you're gonna make sure you take the, this plastic piece out right here. I'm sorry, a rubber piece or whatever the heck it is out, okay? The design looks a little bit different, that's interesting. It's a lot wider seal they put on this one than this one. Oh, I see what happens when you screw this in, that compresses down. You can see this little uh, O-ring or whatever it is right here, that would that would be what I guess could cause the, it to leak water al along the top. Of course, it also could be leaking along the stem itself, this moving part. Not going to worry about it because again, it's an entire assembly, it gets replaced in one shot. dry this as much as I can so that when I turn the water back on I can immediately tell if there are any leaks. Alright so now I've thoroughly dried this whole area here and uh, I'm going to turn the water on and I'm giving it a really good look see to see if there's any signs of any leaks. Looks good. Quick test. 
a little bit of air in the lines. All right, looks good. All that's left to do now is put the handle back on. So I want to make sure the handle is oriented correctly for the off position. And then I'm just going to, well, actually, I'm going to clean this back side here because this is it's kind of tight back there. So over the years, it looks like a little bit of stuff got on there. So I'm going to take this opportunity to clean that. But you get the gist of it. That's basically, this will complete the repair. I hope this helps anybody who's uh, got a honeydew list that they're working off of and want to save a few bucks. Take care.